Welcome back to Fantasy 1.0. Coming at you from a lake by my house. We're going to talk about uh, week three. Sit, start, sleepers, DFS, my lock-in bed of the week, trade targets. I think maybe some sleepers too. Okay, everybody. Uh, welcome to week three. Sit, start, sleepers. Did you see the game last night? Cleveland won a football game. And Hugh Jackson doesn't know if May Baker Mayfield is going to start the fourth game of the season. Again, coach of the year in the running, right? <laughs> All right. All right, let's get to it. So, a little background here. Uh, there's a birthday party at my house, and I don't need to get in the middle of that nonsense. So, I figured, why don't I just go to the forest by my house and shoot here? So, we're going to be bearing with the sound, we're going to be bearing with the light, we're going to be bearing with all sorts of things, but I just wanted to try it out because it's going to be winter soon. Uh, in Canada, winter is always coming. We're like the uh, the Starks up here. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, so uh, same layout as last week and the week before that. I'm going to talk about some QBs. You know, guys that are sort of on the bubble or on your roster, maybe you can stream somebody else depending on uh, the depth of your league. Um, you know, so just looking for that those 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 lower, those middle guys uh, and just trying to determine what to do with them this week. Uh, okay, so let's start with QB. So uh, I want you to start Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, for this for the sole reason of stay inside the fire. I mean, he's been crazy the past two weeks. If he delivers 80% of what he's delivered in week one and week two and week three, which he very well can against Pittsburgh, um, you know, he's definitely QB1, high-end QB, well, mid-range QB1. So uh, he's still available on waivers too right now. So I'm starting him in, I think, one of my leagues. Um, but again, you know, if you have a lack of better options, he's a guy to grab. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Blake Bortles. I think you should maybe consider starting Blake Bortles. 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 <laughs> Bortles. Uh, I, anybody watched the game against the Patriots last week? It was He was pretty locked down. He was pretty good, and that was without Fournette on that running game to sort of be his crutch. So, yeah, I'm interested to see what he does against Tennessee, and I'm willing to, um, you know, to slide him into a, a, a QB slot uh, on a few of my teams, too. Again, depending on who I who I've got. If I'm already rolling with somebody uh, like Aaron Rodgers, then no, I'm not. But again, starts and sits, right? So this is what it's all about. Uh, so Matt Ryan, another guy I'm kind of surprised I'm saying, but again, he's playing New Orleans. He's always got those weapons, uh, and he's going to have his hit or miss weeks. But I think this one's going to be a hit. I I don't know. I always think it's going to be a shootout whenever New Orleans is playing. Um, and last week I was I'm not going to lie, I was kind of wrong about that because what was it, 21-18? I'm sure the over-under was uh, was a little bit harder than that. But either way, yeah, I expect the ball to be thrown uh, quite a bit during this game. So, yeah, uh, consider Matt Ryan. All right, so wide receivers. Djax, uh, same with, you know, Fitzmagic. And by the way, did you see his outfit last week? I think he was wearing Djax's outfit, which is amazing. Um, but anyways, yeah, Djax, again, you know, put him in there as your wide receiver three. He's still available in some leagues too. And same thing, stay inside the fire. They've got some chemistry the first couple weeks of the season. Uh, don't get mad at me if it's a dud, though, because, again, he's, like, you know, high ceiling, low floor. Um, but that's a guy that you might want to throw in there, especially if you're in a matchup, right, where you're projected, let's say that the guy you're up against or the girl you're up against is, you know, projected to win by, like, 10 points, uh, and you, you need some high upside guys in there. Djax is a guy to throw in. He's available. He's, well, maybe, <laughs> but he's, he's available in quite a few leagues right now. Kenny Galladay, I'm going to be talking about him later. I'm targeting him for trades, uh, I think he's the real deal. I know there's Marvin Jones. I know there's um, <laughs> there's Golden Tate. Uh, this game, the ball's going to get thrown quite a bit this game because you got the Patriots offense uh, and then the Patriots terrible secondary. So to me, that sort of you know sort of insinuates that the ball's going to get aired out quite a bit and uh, it's going to be a high-scoring game. Kenny Galladay has had two great you know wide receiver one, wide receiver two weeks. Going into, this, going into this, into week three. So I think he's the guy, man. I think he's going to have a good year. I'll talk about him later as a trade target, but he is. I think you should go after this guy. Uh, Nelson Aguilar. So I have issues with quarterbacks coming back as I throw a stick. Just randomly throwing a stick while I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> Carson Wentz is coming back from an injury. He's been out for, well, I guess we're looking at almost a season now. Um, so, yeah, I question, you know, his durability and you know, how he's going to perform in the game. Uh, it's been a while. He's going to have some rust, and he's obviously just coming off, uh, you know, well, the IR, the PUP, whatever you want to call it. Well, he was on either one of those. He was just hurt. <laughs> Anyways, I don't care who, the, who who's throwing the ball to him because uh, Nick Foles has shown with, I think it was eight targets in both of the first two weeks, that he's willing to throw the ball to him too. Can you hear the geese? See, this is what happens. The geese leave, and they go down and see you guys. Um, anyways, thank you, geese. They jumped in on that. Uh, yeah, so Aguilar, I think he's going to get targets from no matter who. They're playing against Indy, and they're terrible secondary. So, yeah, he's a guy you're going to want to plug in there. Don't be afraid. 
uh, another eagle. So Corey Clement, uh, Jay Ajayi, I am losing faith in. I didn't really have a lot of faith in when the season started. Uh, but uh, yeah, his durability is going to be an issue. I'm not sure if he's out or not this week. But what I do know is that Corey Clement has looked good. And if he's going to be taking more of the backfield share, you know, be it all of it this week or a lot more of it because Ajayi is still hobbled, I think he's going to show up pretty well. Uh, so if you can get him as a flex or an RB2, depending on your league, grab him. Joe Bernard, everybody knows that Joe Mixon is out between two to four weeks. Uh, arthroscopic surgery, apparently it's minor. I'm not a doctor. I hear surgery. I think it's, you know, major. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Gio Bernard, at least this week and the next one, you're going to want to put him in there. Uh, he's, he's looking good. So I think Dalton, they got another rookie. I forget his name. I really do forget his name. But anyways, you know, maybe he's not going to be getting all the first, second down work, but I think he will get quite a bit of it. And he's going to be getting some passes out of the backfield as well. Dalton's going to be throwing him a little bit more. Okay, another guy I want you to target later, but either way, if you got him on your bench, I doubt he's on waivers, but go get this guy, Matt Breida. Matt Breida is going to be, I'm calling it, I'm calling my shot. Uh, I just tweeted this out too. He's hes going to be on a high percentage of championship fantasy football leagues this season. I really like him. Watched the game last week, and I just thought he was running mad. He's taking that backfield. Alfred Morris is going to be taking his seat. Matt Breida is awesome, and... He's going to be looking like Devontae Freeman if you look at who's coaching uh, the 49ers now. So, yeah, get Breida. Get him, get him, get him, and start him, start him, start him. That's a hardcore recommendation right there. Uh, Eric Ebron, I want you to look for him at tight end. Uh, if nothing else, that uh, Jack Doyle's out. Jack Doyle's not playing. He just got ruled out for the game on Sunday. Uh, I like Ebron. He's athletic. He was he was lining up as a tight end. Two tight end sets, obviously. Uh, and he was also in the slot sometimes too. So with uh, with um, Andrew Luck and those short high percentage passes, I think he's averaging like nine point was no five point six yards per pass this year. Like it's something I don't even know if that's a bit attempt. Anyways, he's not throwing the ball very far. He's pretty pretty cautious. And uh, who better to throw the ball to than tight end if you're trying to be cautious, right? So anyways, grab your barn if you can or if you need him. Uh, okay, time to talk about some guys. Y'all want you to sit. I hope you can hear me because I'm not doing this thing again. <laughs> I'm going to get back home and be pretty pissed off if, uh, if the audio doesn't come through. Okay, maybe this is the last one I do outside, but whatever. Let's just let's just get through it. Okay, Phil Rivers, uh, sit all the QBs you can against the Rams, unless their name is Aaron Rodgers. Maybe it's Tom Brady. I don't know. But, yeah, Phil Rivers, have him take a seat. There's somebody else you can probably grab. I know he's got Keenan Allen. He's got Mike Williams. He's got a lot. Well, Melvin Gordon he's throwing through, too. Um, either way, I think there's probably better options out there for you this week. Alex Smith. So I'm kind of changing my stance on Alex Smith. Uh, earlier this week, I was like, oh, I'm starting him. Start him. He's going to be a start recommendation for my Thursday episode. And here I am shooting my Thursday episode late on Friday. Apologies for that. Uh, and secondly, I don't know. I don't think that I don't think the Green Bay secondary is bad as we make it out to be. And I question the weapons that Alex Smith has after Jordan Reed and uh, Chris Thompson. I mean, AP was terrible, so that's not taking much pressure off him from you know running from the backfield. Jameson Crowder is invisible, so is Josh Doxson. So... I don't know. I'm going to be sort of pumping the brakes on him. Where was I? Carson Wentz, for reasons I stated earlier, injury risk. Nothing worse than putting a player in and then having, you know, after the first quarter, he's out of the game because he's tweaked something because he just got off, you know, he just got it back from being hurt. So put something more stable in there. It's such a high floor with quarterbacks, man. You can find somebody better. There's your big Blake Bortles play right there. Sit Wentz. I know it sounds crazy, but put Bortles in because you know you're going to get some. Hold on a second here. There we go. You know you're going to get some rushing yards out of Bortles and just, you know, just do what I say. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I didn't have him in my list here, but I'm going to say this too. Russell Wilson, I hate to say it, but man, uh, I don't know. Just set him. Cowboys were crap. Well, I mean, okay. Seattle's got a terrible offensive line. The Giants have a terrible offensive line. Did you see the look on Eli's face on Monday Night Football when he's getting picked up by his offensive lineman? He looked like he didn't know where he was, and he wasn't concussed. He was just busy and confused. Uh, Russell Wilson's going to have a tough time this week. I, I hate to, I think I've recommended sitting him every week. Uh, but yeah, same thing. So it remains the same as the mic stand or the camera stand falls over almost. Yeah, Russell Wilson's out, man. Uh, okay, Amari Cooper. I don't, okay, you know why? If I, okay, I'm telling you to sit Amari Cooper right now. So you know what that means? He's going to blow up this week. That's what's going to happen. So maybe do the opposite of what I'm saying. I'll tell you this. I'm sitting him. But, you know, and I have written here, will the real Amari Cooper please stand up? Like, I've had enough of this. I don't know who you who you are. I will say last year, I don't know if you remember, when he played against the Chiefs. Where was I? I was in Detroit watching that game for work. And uh, he had, like, 250 receiving yards. He had, like, half of his receiving yards for the season in one game. That's just, that's so Amari. It's so Amari to do that. But anyways, yeah, 
I'm saying sit him, so that's it, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, my man, Demarius Thomas. Sorry, man, he looked, you look old. He looks old. He dropped. I think he dropped two balls last week. He, I don't know, man. I think Cortland Sutton's going to be sort of getting in there a little bit more. But, yeah, if you're on the bubble and he is that bubble, then put him on the other side of it. Put him on the bench side of the bubble. Um, Michael Crabtree, I know you probably invested ridiculously. You didn't listen to me. A fifth round draft pick probably or something like that for him. You know, knowing full well that this is Joe Flacco we're talking about in the Ravens. Even though Flacco looks okay this year, he likes uh, he likes his man John Brown. He does not like Michael Crabtree. So, yeah, get over your ego of where you drafted him. You probably have a better wide receiver on your bench. Uh, Josh Gordon, I don't know, man. Just wait till you see what happens with him, what they're going to do with him if he doesn't show up to the game drunk. I shouldn't make fun. Like, I feel bad. The guy actually probably has some serious problems. Well, he does. It's not funny. i got to stop. But either way, I'm just looking at what he's going to do on the field or not do on the field and his how his actions off the field may affect him even being on the field. Way too risky for me. Again, you need some high upside. That's maybe a guy to grab. But if you're just looking for a safe, stable play, uh, that's more often than not going to probably underperform. Uh, Josh Gordon, keep him on your bench. All right, running backs. Uh, so I was going to tell you to sit Dalvin Cook, but now you have no choice because on my way here, I realized that he's actually out. So obviously sit a guy that's out. And that actually brings me up to, uh, if we could rewind, <laughs> but we can't. I'll talk about him in Sleepers, but Latavius Murray. I'm also going to talk about him in, uh, in DraftKings. He's a guy that you need to start because the Vikings could very well shut out the uh, the Bills, they could be up 21 nothing by the end of the first, and then they could just be pounding the ball for the rest of the game. With the Vikings D, when the Bills offense together, like I don't know what's going to happen. But anyways, well, I do. It's going to be terrible for Buffalo. What a terrible team, man. I feel bad for the fans. Uh, Rex Burkhead. I, man, I hate, I hate the New England backfield. I hate it. I know I recommended James White, but it's just because I like that, the fact that if you have a, if they have a passing running back and if that rotation of guys, some are hurt, some aren't, uh, works out, then, you know, play James White. But that was last week. This week, I'm saying sit Rex Burkhead. Uh, there's too many mouths of feedback there. I never know what Belichick is going to do week to week um, and where Burkhead's going to fit to it. Sony Michelle's back in the mix too, right? So anyways, you probably spent some draft capital on this guy too. Probably a sixth round pick, which is ridiculous. You should have listened to me. Anyways, he's on zero of my teams. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> All right, Alex Collins. Uh, if you have a better option, sit him. Another guy that you get your ego out of the way. You drafted him pretty high, but he's not hes not showing up yet. And I don't think he's going to be doing it this week either against Denver. So, anyways, yeah. And I have no, no idea why they got Javarius Allen out there instead of him more often. But whatever. I'm not the coach. Uh, sit Tyler Eifert. He's got a great name. I know, that, you know, in the past few years he's been hurt. But he is just a touchdown. That's all he is or not a touchdown, and more likely not, because he's not playing a lot of snaps. They're, uh, they're hardcore rationing his um, his snap count, because they don't they actually want him for, you know, game 16. They want him all season, and if they do make the playoffs, which they might. So they're going to be resting you know, out of that guy. And they got, you know, the boy showed up last week, had a big week. I just don't know what's going to happen after Green and, uh, well, after, and this week Bernard. So, yeah, hey, you can take a seat. Pick up somebody else that I told you to. All right? <laughs> All right, defense is. Uh, Houston's like 90% owned, but I, for some reason I seem like they're popping up in leagues of mine. So I've got them, I, I, I stream them in like two or three leagues. So just take a look for Houston. They're going to crush the Giants, my Giants, which makes you feel kind of bad, but whatever. This is, you know, this is, this is the game inside the game. So there you go. You have to overlook the teams that you love. Turn your back on them. Um, and then Dallas, if you look what they did to my Giants last week, maybe you should start them too because they're going to do it to Seattle. Um, all right, sleeper time. I don't have to say it. Latavius Murray, I mentioned that before. I guess you can kind of include Ebron in there too, just for the fact that these guys are replacing others in injuries. Could be overlooked that they're going to have expanded roles. So, wanted to mention that. Um, all right, what else I got? Trade targets. These are guys I'm targeting in my, I know this sounds like I'm a crazy person, but in my 11 leagues that I'm in, I am targeting actively, if they're not on my teams, Quincy Anunua, Matt Breida, and Kenny Galladay. Uh, for the reason that the first, the second two were late round draft picks, and Quincy Anunua was not drafted. Unless you were me and you picked him up with your last pick, or if you listened to me and watched my show and listened and picked him up with your last pick as well. So now you're chasing him, and he's getting what an average of like nine targets a game because Sam Darnold has nobody else to throw to, and he's scared and confused and likes those short passes to a big a guy with 230 pound guy with big hands that catches the ball, big good hands, and knocks people like he was basically a running back or. Well, at least, okay, give me a tight end for yesterday's game. Anyways, target these guys. I think that Galladay is the real deal. I think Anunu is going to be a, a target monster. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. And I want you to do another thing. If you have DJ, 
Uh, David Johnson, I don't want you to trade for him. I think that that's there's. I think he's. I think he might be going out like Gurley did two years ago. Uh, you know, like a running back too. He came in with a lot of promise, and they're not going to really use him. I was really concerned last week when they were behind, behind so much, and they were not throwing to him. And then they came out with all this talk about how they're going to line him up in the slot. And I hate when they say, when they come out after games and say he's going to play more, or we need to play him more, or he has to do this. Don't talk about it; just do it. And they weren't doing it. They don't know what to do with him. So I think he might be, uh, yeah, crushed along with the rest of that team this year. So okay, long and short, I want you to test the market on him. I want you to sort of look around. I've been sending tweets out, just asking people what they think. I did it with James Conner and Lev Bell. I'm moving on to, to, to David Johnson. I get obsessed with trade value and how it sort of hap- goes throughout the season. So, I mean, I would before Dalvin Cook got hurt, I was like, Dalvin Cook? Melvin Gordon? Like, how high can you go? Kareem Hunt? Can you get those guys for David Johnson? Do you want to go after those guys for David Johnson? I don't know. I've got them on a couple of my teams, and I'm curious. Drop me some comments below and other people that you want to sort of see trade value, engage trade value on. I think that's really interesting. When you see guys that are underperforming or overperforming for whatever reason, uh, what kind of interest they'll elicit on the market. You know, and after a good week and after a bad week and things like that too. All right, what else do I have? Okay, the bet walk of the week. Okay, so I'll go over with my little system again and you guys might find it boring, but whatever, hear me out. So I don't bet the spread. I don't bet on over-unders. I bet on the main motivation why everybody is on that field and that is to win the game. So I bet the winner. I bet the winner and I bet games where, well, I bet against the underdog is really what I do. Because I find, and as you know, you know, betting betting sites and companies, they want to. I guess you can call it a company. Anyways, they, um, you know, they want half of you to bet one way, or half of us to bet one way, and half of us bet the other. They make the money on that, like that 10% margin in the middle. That's where they make their money. They're safe money. So, I have a feeling, and like I'm treating this like a bank account right now. So I'm just saying, I have a feeling that more people want to bet on that slight underdog, looking for that. Um, that value, you know, like, well, it's only, it's only plus 180 and da 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 So, anyways, long of the short, I bet, what about last week? I bet just to win, no parlay either. And I, and I, I recommend doing one bet a week. So, I don't know why I did three. It's kind of stupid with me. But anyways, Denver, skin of my teeth, won that. Um, who else did I win with? I would be San Francisco, beat the Giants, beat the Lions. Denver, Lions. What else did I have? I had another game in there, too. Oh, well, okay. Chargers and the Bills, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you, Brad. That's awesome. That was a really tough one. <laughs> Anyways, I'm telling you this. Chicago's playing in Arizona. It's minus 230. So I know it's not, I mean, whatever. You bet $10, you get four. I know. Everybody's like, whoa. But, like, do you picture Khalil Mack putting up with any crap from the offensive line in Arizona? Do you think Arizona's offense and Sam, Sam uh, Bradford and his 64 yards he passed last week is going to have a chance at beating Chicago? I do not. I do not. So I'll take that bet. I'll take it. And I'll tell you that I, I'm standing by it. So I'm going to come on the next week and I'm going to either eat some crow and say I'm stupid or I'm going to be like, check that out and check out this week's bet. So anyways, that's my lock of the week. Don't put the house on it, but, you know, a little bit of cheddar. Um, okay, what else do I have? What else do I have for you? Okay, so I'm going to do some DFS stuff now. Okay, so how I play DFS is sort of nice and boring, like I like I bet. Uh, DFS, I play 50-50s, that's it, because the same thing, it's like money in the bank or money coming out of the bank. So I'm not looking to get 200 points, I'm looking to get in the top half of however big that tournament is. So what I'm going to do is I'm talking to you some guys that could like blow the roof off the league uh, without stating the obvious, because these are going to be some big players, but I'm just saying guys that I think for whatever reason are going to have a really big week, or inordinately higher than the amount that they're being asked for or yeah the value of them so anyways antonio brown i know he's 8800 uh second highest this is all DraftKings, by the way second highest rated or valued wide receiver for the week behind michael thomas here's why i think he's going to do even more than that it's because he's a big baby he's a wah wah uh he was yelling at the offensive coordinator he like didn't show up to practice you know normally those kind of guys get cut or uh you know suspended or whatever they sit out the first few drives i don't think they're going to do that I, first of all they're they're apparently they can do whatever they want in pittsburgh tomlin just lets them be a bunch of prima donnas i think it's going to continue um even though they're playing on the road and uh, Big Ben isn't quite so good on the road, I think they're going to be hucking the you-know-what out of the ball to him because they want to keep their other star happy because the other one's sitting at home right now uh, sending out strange tweets. <laughs> so I think Antonio Brown's going to have a huge week. And it's against Tampa Bay, so there you go. Uh, a little lower on the on the list here is uh, Jordan Howard. He's 6500 bucks, But again, I think the Cardinals are going to get murdered this week. Murdered, murdered, murdered. I think the Chicago's defense is underrated already. 
I, I, and people are saying it's a great defense. I think it's going to be one of the best defenses of the year. Um, I mean, Trubisky isn't all that, obviously, but is Sam Bradford. So, yeah, I think they're going to be running the ball quite a bit. Jordan Howard's hands don't look bad. And considering the DraftKings is PPR, go get him, man. So, yeah, 6500 bucks. I think I'm picking him up. All right, so tight ends, uh, obviously kind of a boomer bust position. You really, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're, garbage you know if you're dumpster diving for these guys you're just looking for a few receptions and a touchdown but guys that can like light it up obviously gronk so see i'm stating the obvious i know but 7400 dollars gronk i mean you know he can if, if if that's the week for gronk to be or the tight end is being the you know whatever belichick is going on in his crazy head it's a smart crazy head but if it's his week it's his week it wasn't his week last week but two receptions 15 yards or something like that but you also got jalen ramsey all over you so look for a bit of you know a bit of ticked off revenge maybe we'll gronk brady too man he didn't look so hot last week either so uh expect a big week out of him or a potential big week out of him and then Travis Kelsey. He had a huge week last week. It's going to be just this spin the wheel offense, man. I mean, you got Sammy Watkins in there. Uh, you got Tyreek the Freak Hill. Uh, you got Cream Hunt, who I think is going to start catching some passes too. You know, I just keep investing in that offense. So if you want to throw a guy like Kelsey in there, go for it. 6700 bucks. Um, okay, big defenses, Vikings, obviously, because I think they're likely going to shut the Bears out. Or maybe the Bears will get three points. Get lucky, get three points. Um, yeah, there, there's my D. <laughs> okay, I didn't even write how much they were. They'll be the most expensive, obviously. All right, bang for your buck. These are some values. Because, um, again, like, I'm in a tournament. I want to find some safe players, relatively high ceilings, but high floors. Because I just want to finish in the top half. That's it, that's all. And then, you know, thank you for the money. Thank you for the money. So that's it. All right, so here we go. So we're going to run through some guys. So Corey Clement, 4300 bucks. Going to have a good share of that backfield. And, again, don't, don't post, like, don't send these, well, Make the how about this? Make edits to your existing lineups in contests right before the ball kicks off. So if you find that a J you're in things that a Jai is gonna play, which he's or or gonna, you know, play uh have a full workload this week, first of all you're not gonna hear that. But look for things like he's not going to play, he's out. <laughs> or, you know, where he's gonna be a hardcore snap count or whatever. But anyways, Corey Clement, forty three hundred bucks. He could be the you know, he could be could be an R B one this week. That's a, that's the ceiling. And I mean he shouldn't have too much of a floor because I expect uh, he's good and I expect Philly to run the ball. Um, Kenyon Drake, 5600 bucks. I like him. I think that we have yet to see. I think we're going to see the Kenyon Drake from last year soon. They just got to let like, Gore get out of the way. I'm sure he's tired. He's tired. He's old and he's tired. Um, yeah, okay. So, anyways, Kenyon Drake, 5600 bucks. I think he's going to have a nice solid floor against Oakland. My man, Matt Breida. He's coming up in all my categories, all the categories where it's good. All right, got to worry about this battery here. We're going to wrap this up. Okay, Matt Breida. He's 5400 bucks. Gio Bernard, for reasons stated above, uh, 5900 Marshawn Lynch, 4900 Now, the guy I want you to sort of look around. If you got him on your team, test the market for him, though, and see what's going on. I don't know if he can do this all year. He ain't young. What is he, 33 Latavius Murray, 5800 bucks for reasons stated before. Uh, wide receivers. See, a lot of these I've already been over it, but we'll just tell you the guys and their values. Kenny Galladay, six grand against New England. Um, Sammy Watkins, 5100 bucks. Best lot, best. Probably the best offense in the league this year. Buy a piece of it. He's another deep threat too. It's not like he can't run. It's not like he's you know just the just the the possession guy. Uh, Dem Funches. Dem Funches, man. I I expect you're already starting him. If you're not, do that for sit starts. Uh, he had a great week, man. Last week with Greg Olson out. So yeah, Funches is Funches is going to get a lot more target share. What else I have here? Nelson Aguilar for reasons stated above. Eric Ebron moving on to tight ends. Eric Ebron for reasons stated above. Jared Cook. Can't believe I'm saying Jared Cook, but he's four grand, and I think it's a good value against Miami this week. Uh, a couple of these I want you to take a look at too. Cowboys, 2200 bucks against Seattle. Uh, yep, I'll take it. That's that's a really good value there. And then the Dolphins is against Oakland. And out of those two, save the 500 bucks, take the Cowboys. All right, what else I got for you? That's all I have. That's it. What do we got? 23 minutes. There you go. See, quick and easy. I got you. Got everything you need for Sunday. So this is why you need to subscribe below Fantasy 1.0. Leave some comments. Tell me what you think. Tell me some. Give me some content suggestions. Uh, so there's typically Monday. I'll be coming out with the um, with the waiver wire pickups, and then you got your Friday sits, starts, waivers, you know, trade picks, and all that jazz. That's that's coming at you right now. So subscribe to this. Uh, my Twitter handle is below. You can send me a tweet, but just comment in here and definitely like everything. Just like everything and subscribe to everything. All right, I'm out. Good luck this week.